Jago Hazard recently put out a great video on the iconic noise made by the 1996 stock trains used on the Jubilee line. Almost all of it was well researched and well edited, however there are a few technical inaccuracies that I picked up. To Jago's credit, he acknowledged these and also acknowledged the difficulties in finding correct information on this subject, and he did his best to explain the complicated topic, and I commend him for that. I happened to do a fair bit of research on traction packages, especially that of the 1996 stock a few months back. Obviously nothing super high level, but enough that I think I could throw my two cents into the mix. <laughs> To understand what makes the 96 stock sound so special, we must unfortunately have a quick look at the history of how electric trains move. I'll keep this within the context of the London Underground to avoid overcomplicating things. Originally trains used DC motors fed from the DC traction supply in the third and fourth rails. There's one significant issue with DC motors however, a thing called the inrush current. In simple terms, Inrush current is the current drawn by DC motors the instant they start moving. To control this, initially, large resistor banks were used, and these would be progressively bypassed as the train gained speed. This can be observed in the 72 and 73 stocks. When the train departs, a clicking sound can be heard, and this is the sound of the resistors being bypassed. These systems do not make a distinctive sound, the only sound produced is from the spinning motors and wheels themselves. The issue with this system is that resistors are inefficient and produce a lot of heat. To circumvent this, a new technology was derived from new electronic advancements, the chopper thyristor. This worked by very quickly turning on and off the power supply to the DC motors during the initial stages of accelerating. This is called pulsing. This achieves the same effect as resistors without the inefficiencies and heat loss, and after a few seconds, as with the resistors, the full amount of power would be fed to the motors. This pulsing occurs at a fixed frequency, creating a stable note during those first moments of pulsing before full current is applied to the motors. This is why the 1992 stock have a pronounced single note on startup, but no discernible motor noise after that. The 1996 stock were the first trains on the London Underground to use AC motors. AC motors are more efficient than DC motors as they lack permanent magnets and brushes, but they could not be used in train motors until around about the 1990s as they required sophisticated computer control devices called variable frequency devices or VFDs to convert the DC supply to the AC traction motors. AC motors work with a sine wave input of electricity, hence alternating current, AC. And for this to work in trains, the sine wave must be correctly modulated. Make the wave smaller and the motor spins faster, or make the wave larger and the motor spins slower. The first generation of these VFDs consisted of a gate turnoff thyristor, or GTO, connected to a computer on which is programmed the correct modulation data. These GTOs would convert the DC supply to the correct modulated sine wave by quickly switching the power on and off just like DC pulsing on the 1992 stock, but with a pattern to match the required sine wave. As the train accelerates, this pattern contracts simultaneously, thus we hear the rising tone. But why does the 96 stock make the distinctive gear shift sound? The pattern created by the GTOs had one problem. As the train accelerated, the sine wave would contract. This forced the GTO to turn on and off increasingly fast, faster than they could handle. To solve this, the GTO is programmed to continually simplify the pattern it makes whenever it approaches that limit. 
This creates the instant tone shift down or up when decelerating we all know and love. As Jago alluded to, modern trains use even more modern VFD technology, insulated gate bipolar transistors, or IGBTs, that work on the same principle as GTOs, except the switching limit is far higher, so VFDs can go longer before shifting down. This means modern trains sound far less interesting. I will add, however, some rapid transit rolling stock still retain the cool GTO-esque sounds and this is because they're geared for a much uh, higher gear ratio to prioritize acceleration over maximum speed which means the motors spin much faster than the wheels do compared to other trains simple-ish explanation. Obviously there's far more to this that I have had to cut out in the interests of simplicity, but if you do want to learn more I highly recommend watching Benno's video, which I'll link in the top right. Thanks for watching, if you have any questions I'll answer them as best I can in the comments below, otherwise have a great day and goodbye.